Welcome to Amsterdam and KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023. Join John Furrier, Savannah Peterson, Rob Streche, and Yu Piscott as the Cube covers the largest conference on Kubernetes, cloud native, and open source technologies together with developers, engineers, and IT leaders from around the globe. Live coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023 is made possible by the support of Red Hat, the CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here at KubeCon in Amsterdam, it's Europe, it's Cloud Native Con. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Rob Streche, analyst in theCUBE, got Deepak Gold here, CTO of D2IQ, formerly Mesos for the folks in the industry going back uh, in the beginning of DevOps and containers and all this, all this great stuff happening now. Deepak, thank you for coming on theCUBE and appreciate Thank you for it. having me. So we've been unpacking a lot of the trends here. We, we, the Cube's been to every single Kubernetes KubeCon since its existence, I think now 13th episode yeah. here. Um, it just gets better and better on the mainstream adoption. Still so much work to do, simplicity, a lot of challenges there. Although they, get, they, they score themselves great on portability, Rob and I think that, or Rob's more on the, they need more work on portability, but overall Kubernetes being more enterprise grade, the progress is there, web assembly's looking good, a lot of devs coming together, infrastructure as code's a done deal. We're starting to see it go mainstream, containers, virtualization moving into containers, big migrate, a lot of headroom from a business standpoint, right. a lot of more projects coming right. down the pike. You guys are at the center of it. Where do you see it going on here? What's the top story at KubeCon this year from a Kubernetes standpoint? So Kubernetes, uh, over this years, the, I would say the day zero aspect of Kubernetes has simplified quite a bit. It has become uh, a new opt for anybody to bring up a Kubernetes cluster. Um, but Kubernetes alone is not enough to run in production, right? It's a, I would say it's an enabler to create a platform. So that's why it's an API based, and it has been very successful. What we're starting to see is people moving higher in the stack yeah. and abstracting some of the complexities of Kubernetes to simplify it. As bigger organizations, Global 2000s are adopting Kubernetes, they need that simplicity uh, to uh, spin up a cluster which is production ready, which is secure by, by uh, nature, which is, has observability, which has monitoring, logging, all traditional aspects of a cluster that they have always seen in another platform. Now you would see there's integration points happening in Kubernetes as well. Yeah, and, and I think you had some announcements that, to me, signal that Kubernetes really has a lot of momentum. It's the, the fact that you're going into air-gapped environments, the fact that you're going into managed service providers. Right. I, I think, to me, that would lead me to believe that there's newer people coming in looking at these microservices built applications. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, um, uh, one of the CNCF surveys from two years back have showcased that all the innovations that are happening in any industries, you take blockchain, you take uh, digital reality, genomics, robotics. In fact, the chat GPT, which I'm pretty sure is known name in every house, is being run on Kubernetes. So Kubernetes has become the de facto uh, platform for that is fueling ev innovation in every area today. So one of the rise of um, Kubernetes impact has been the enterpriseification, a word that we heard earlier, that's not really a word. As it gets more mainstream, Rob was talking about the platform engineering piece becoming much more defined from right. a practice standpoint, where team formation, roles, yep. you guys talk a lot about this, this is a hot trend here at KubeCon. What does platform engineering mean today? And how do you see that rolling forward? Is it a modernized version of IP with a reconfiguration refactored or What's your view of what's your view of platform engineering? Platform engineering is uh, some is a team that is responsible, or it's a concept about creating reusable standard tools um, that are scalable, that are consistent, uh, that brings in uh, the uh, consistency in managing the platform. Right? Um, there has been a trend, especially which was started with uh, when the cloud services came a thing. Um, where developers started doing their own things. Um, and that led to um, proliferation of uh, different toolings, a different way of doing the same things. Right. Um, and it, it was a costly thing when do you do that. What Platform Engineering has started doing is, is consolidating all those variety to a standard tooling, where developers can still achieve the agility, 
that they hope to achieve with the cloud native platform, but in a much more consistent and cost effective manner. What's the biggest impact to um, IT from an infrastructure as code standpoint as DevSecOps becomes day two like, more day two like, as we were saying, what's the big impact? What's different about platform engineering than classic IT? The, the platform engineering, uh, classic IT was responsible. They didn't have the insights into the, uh, what the developer requirements are. What they used to provide is the infrastructure on the request basis. Platform engineering is, I would say, much, uh, if I have to use a word, is an aware IT ops, which is they, they now understand uh, the platform through, like for example, Kubernetes, and they, they configure in such a way that takes away the burden from developers Right. Um, and standardize them into a platform so that developers can focus on their developing the application, making their life easier, like for example, deploying the cluster, making sure the cluster is elastic, secure, uh, easy to use, um, whereas the, the developer can focus on their business applications. Yeah. And, and I think what's really key to that, and I, I think it is that centralization, I, I, I like to say my former employer, Amazon, with their two pizza teams kind of started a, a whole movement where you're going to have, okay, eight people and a manager, eight people and a manager using different systems, different methods, different SREs, True. different DevOps on different infrastructure and different tooling. Uh, it would seem that you know, the CIO is really helping lead some consolidation around it. Is that what you're seeing as Yes, well? exactly. Yeah. So what, what led to, um, one of the, what, DevOps has been very good in achieving the agility and time to market, but what it missed is it led to the problems like cluster sprawl, cloud sprawl, where uh, developers are spinning because their main focus is how to get their code running in production easily. But for the organization as a whole, it created some of the challenges, which is what is simplified by having platform engineering or IT team, which has the experience and expertise to use like something we call um, instance platform engineering, which is using the right platform, right tooling, um, and providing an environment for developers where they can still feel self-managed and self-served, yep. but yep. under the guardrails of the platform that the platform engineering has provided. Deepak, Rob and I were talking on day one. Remember we were talking about developer productivity? Oh, yeah. So this gets at the heart of developer productivity because obviously platform engineering has to enable. Yes. It's not just a service organization like the classic IT. Developer first, developers are setting the, the agenda. Right. So okay, so developer productivity is number one. So assume platform engineering is in place. What are some of the developer productivity challenges and opportunities today? Obviously SBOM, supply chain is a big problem. Now you got generative AI putting code in the mix. We call it code pollution um, coming in. Stack Overflow just banned chat GPT, they don't want any of that in there. It's a, it's a nightmare, so like, you have all this hardened kind of mindset going on, and then, but yet developers want more data. So, how do you see the whole developer equation from a productivity standpoint to a consumption? Because it's, we're not B to B anymore, it's like B, D, B to D. Right, This is the right. developer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're That's, the consumer. Right, so, um, I, I give a analogy with the car analogy. It's like if if we ask a driver to configure the engine first before driving the car, they'll say their product they can't drive the car because their right. whole time will go in configuring the engine itself. Uh, in developers without this platform engineering is something like that. They have to first configure their system before they can use their system, which kills their productivity. What what enables their productivity is uh, a platform that is secure. Right? right, that is scalable, that is uses standardized tooling, that is consistent and easy to use and easy to deploy, right? So that the developers can come in and deploy their application without worrying about whether it's a secure way of deploying the application, is somebody attacking their applications, right? All those concerns are being taken care by using a, a, a platform that provides this out of the box. How would you rate the productivity of today's developer on a scale of one to 10? Obviously, compare, it's not, not, don't compare to old way, but like in DevOps, as DevOps becomes more mainstream, more tooling's out there, what's the? I would say, uh, before even I give the rank, I would say it gives a perception that the DevOps is becoming agile, but what's happening is it is creating shadow IT within those teams. Give because, an example. Uh, because uh, operations are complex, right, by nature, because of the things that you have to take care, um, security that we have talked about. What happens is in a, in a typical team, 
the senior developers takes this responsibility of providing the operation. And what ends up happening is the reverse effect of what the organization was expecting their senior engineers to be doing, which is like focusing on the developing the business application instead of working on the operation. What happens is they start helping the junior engineers and it creates a model which is reversed to what the organization was expecting. And that leads to the, the cost inefficiency and ineffectiveness. And we call it as like a shadow dev. Um, dev. The shadow DevOps. Yes, yes. Shadow do you agree? I, I would agree and I, I think this is why platform engineering has gotten, as, uh, is becoming more mainstream is that it's bringing it back together so you're not, to your, I think to your earlier comment, it's IT that is developer friendly right. versus an adversarial where that was very adversarial back, even if you look at how databases were dealt with in VMware. Right. And I, I kind of look at everything that's old as new again and we kind of learned, it seems like, and very interested in your opinion on this, it seems like we're getting through that at a faster pace where it's coming together, like the teams are coming together. One of the differences I would highlight uh, in comparison with the traditional centralized IT was there was a ticketing system that used to be in place. Yeah. Like the team would, in, if, if they need an infrastructure, they used to create a ticket for that team, that team will act on it, so that used yeah. to delay a lot of um, uh, productivity or, or agility that the organization were looking for. That's why DevOps became so attractive because right. now you don't have to do the, yeah. any of the requests, you can just go and create your own thing. Um, what platform engineering allows it to do is they still maintain the agility and the self-serving and self-managing nature of DevOps, but they provide an environment that is being custom made for that environment. Instead of like centralized IT, figuring out all the time based on request, platform right. engineering is, that's why I was using the term aware centralized IT. They are aware of what would be yeah. the need of developers and providing that environment. They still got to do it, yeah. yeah. The job changes, just it's faster. Yeah. Yes. I mean, agile is the key word, but the shadow, the shadow IT example for devs is very interesting because they say they want to go faster. Yes. There's going to be consequences to this. It's got compliance, it's security. Right. What are some of the um, things you've seen that's been bad that companies can avoid? Because I'm sure it's happening in other companies that no one knows about, but what, what's, how do you identify it? And then what are some of the consequences or benefits of it? Benefits or, of platform engineering? Well, Shadow IT, you could argue, was actually good <laughs> because that helped the DevOps movement. Right. So is there a positive or negative impact to Shadow DevOps? It, it ultimately leads to a negative impact. That's why I was reading one article where CIOs is saying after three or four years of their investment, they are now looking for return on that investment, which yeah. they are not seeing. Uh, because what happens is initially it gives an impression that everything is moving yeah. fast, but over time it builds up the maintenance and the operational burden of managing that platform. And that's where the organization realized that they missed on standardizing tooling. Like for example, they may start with one cloud provider. Different teams would use different cloud providers. They maintain different toolings, different teams to different skill set and they lose the efficiency or the benefit of having yeah. some kind of a standardization. Yep. So the shadow IT, um, um, and then it, because it's not one time you launch a code and you forget about it. There's a continuous upgrade that happens, there's a continuous maintenance, and the teams are not benefited by having this cross team um, knowledge yeah. sharing because they do it by themselves. Yeah, and I, I think that it's been interesting hearing, that that's been a theme that we've been hearing uh, especially the multiple cloud teams and things of that nature. Do you think projects like Backstage and others are going to really help bring that back so it becomes more of that becomes the interface? Uh, and are you guys working on Backstage or with the Backstage group? Um, I've heard a lot, we are not directly working on yeah. that, but uh, I have a hard positive thing. What yeah. we have done is with our platform is something very similar, yeah. which is like uh, providing that instant out of the box production ready environment which is multi-tenant. So that management platform is being maintained by platform engineering okay. group, but then it has the ability, because it's multi-tenant, it has the ability to function like a DevOps under the guardrail of what the platform has provided. Like for example, just to give a simple example, if an organization wants to provide a set of applications that their developers should be using without having their developers to select those applications, then the, uh, the central engine, platform engine team can expose those through the platform and then the developers can come in and spin those applications. So like a marketplace that you're right, providing. Right, exactly. Yeah. Which, which and, is, and one of the interesting things is when uh, Savannah would give me crap for not mentioning it. We actually showed off your sweatshirt yesterday as well. <laughs> yeah, great in swag. In our swag, swag segment, it was a really good piece of swag. So, uh, you. you know, 
high marks on the swag for uh, the show. And uh, you know, did we get our sweatshirts? I, I haven't gone by yet. I'll, I'll have to swing by at some point. You can put that on the price guide. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah, buy. We'll yeah, buy yeah, a few sweatshirts. Yeah, Great swag. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. This is going to be an ongoing conversation. We should dig into it when we get back to, uh, to the U.S. Platform engineering is moving fast. It's kind of recasting into, I won't say recasting, in re I think it's redefining IT, it certainly has. The shadow dev's interesting because it could be an opportunity or it could be problematic. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I've always felt shadow IT was yeah. swipe the credit card, get on Amazon. That, that funded the movement. It, it, it definitely did. It's, <laughs> it's definitely where it started. Deepak, thank you for coming on. Thank you Appreciate for having it. me. CTO of D2 IQ here on theCUBE, breaking it down. Platform engineering, the new DevOps, the trends continue faster, more reliable, and, and actually more portable Kubernetes. We'll be right back. The leader in tech coverage, theCUBE, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm.